This is Rich Homie Meat, and I need you to get in the mix with the West Side Misfits every Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. Gone on on, you know it. Sitting in my room, waiting for the afternoon so I can finally tune in with my friends. Talk about good times, music, laughs, and easy vibes. You can share whatever's on your mind. Find a place called home on Misfits Radio. 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 Yo. 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 Hey. We in West Side. Mix. Misfits. Mix. Yo. You're independent. This the mix you need to get up in it. Yo. Three to five. The show be lit from start to finish. Hit them up to slide through and promote your business. Wow. DJ Lab known to keep the hottest record spinning. Mix, mix a lot of tape, Mac, discuss the hottest topic. Yo. Those not a 2000, gonna let you know what's really popping. Yo. Miss Slick, gonna make sure she get the mangles right. Make the moves, even though she's staying out of sight. Check the website, Misfits Media Group. Keep it 100, cause that's how they gonna give it to you. Something for anyone and everyone from every wall. 365, 24 7, got music and talk. Sundays, you know we getting in the mix. Three to five with West Side Misfits. Kick facts, play music, and talk slick. Tell a friend to tell a friend to get in the mix. Tell a friend to tell a friend to get in the mix. Tell a friend to tell a friend to get in the mix. Sundays, you know we getting in the mix. From three to five with West Side Misfits. We in the mix, we in the mix, we in the mix. You are officially in the mix, baby. I am Miss Mix a lot. I am DJ Lab. And you know we got Select 316 in the building. <laughs> and guess who else is over here? Right. Who's uh -huh. that? I co-host, I co-host, I co-host K Lady. That's what's right. Up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> That's right, man. We done had two of our favorite Virgos had a birthday the week. <laughs> right. One of them you just heard. Right. I'm the intro. My name is Shaw. His birthday was yesterday. That's right. And not a birthday was Friday. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yes, honey. We got to get him to drop people. in as a guest now. And look, <laughs> let me tell you what's so crazy. So let me tell you, so, so let me just say this. Let me just say this. So my brother did an interview uh, with the podcast. I can't even remember the name of it. However it went. So after, the, after I watched it, it was a good, it was a good interview, but Ain't no interview like a West Side Misfits interview with those Nada in the building. That's right. That's right. That's you understand? Right. So I called and cussed his ass out. <laughs> and I was like, you so lame. You he was like, what? Hello? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you lame. I was like, I, our interviews are way better. Da -da -da. He was like, you know what you write. Mm -hmm. He was like, man, y'all should let me come back. I was like, we never told you to leave. leave. What you, you left on your about? own. That was your own your discretion. Your vehicle did something crazy, and you said that you couldn't make it. And now that you got another vehicle, you need to be making it. And you live closer. And he was like, you know what? I'm coming back. He was like, I ain't think y'all wanted me back. I was like, you so lame. <laughs> And you act you like real lame for that though, right. You and, real and lame. And I don't talk to you every day. You real lame. But he I, and I understood what he how, why he felt the way that he felt because you know how sometimes when you feel when, it's kind of like guilt to mm -hmm. a certain extent when you know that nobody ain't did that to you, <laughs> but you had to remove yourself for personal reasons and now you want to come back. Right. But. A lot of people don't accept you back. Man. Right. We but like we family. That. Exactly. We but family. He, the, he, he the original. He knows One of the that. Original. He knows that. Like, dude, you're you're my brother. What are you talking about? Right. And right. you my brother but from another mother. Exactly. So, I'm so it was just really weird. But however, we're gonna he'll be back. All right. He'll be back soon too, man. Whew. Let me just say this. Last weekend. Me and Lab both were booked, child. We couldn't do no show. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> we were both booked, man. But um, and here I is coming in the house at five, four o'clock in the morning, rolling my ass up out of bed. Man, we be forgetting. Let me tell you. Touch so. our head, not our heart. We be really be busy. Let right. me tell you. So but I get a phone right. call. I right back to sleep. Yeah. Because I, I was booked for a action. Oh, man. And we got to talk about that a little bit, too. <laughs> I was booked for a wedding um reception. 
and I was booked to bartend. And Lad was booked to do live streaming for the radio station. Mm -hmm. So, baby, it was just a lot. So, um, a lot of times, you know, we try to support each other, but it's hard when it, you know, when it's just us. But mm -hmm. what I will say is this. Y'all wedding people need to make sure you got the right people doing your wedding planning mm, and mm. your wedding stuff. Mm. Oh, let's talk about it. So this is the third time, honestly, that I have, and I've been bartending for a very long time, as you, you guys already know. Right. Real, real at 20 years now, because real is what, 8, 19? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, my baby had a birthday. <laughs> She's 19, so... You getting old, girl. Yeah. Your, yeah. Kid, your daughter is 19. 19, my baby. Yeah. So, it was so weird yeah, because I've been in this game for a minute and only three times have I realized that sometimes when you try to cut corners, you really ain't cutting corners. You fucking up. You fucking up. Mm. So, um, it was a lot going on. The thing about it was the wedding reception was at a very cute little place that we should probably try to see what's going on there because this, it was a nice venue. So you could do like birthday. You could do whatever. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's a very nice venue. But what happened is the person that was cooking was also the person that was decorating was That's also the, the man, person. Hold on. That was the first mistake. Was also the person that did the cake. <laughs> that was also the person. Was, it was. Lord. Wait a minute. That was way too. Um, the only way you can, I can say, you can have a company. Let me put that in quotations. Doing multiple things. If you got like, say, like Labs is in charge of the cooking. You have to know that you need a team. Mm, right. A and whole then, team. like, and Slick would be in charge of. The so, cake, you know, you have a company, but you got different people in but charge what, of that. What basically it happens person. though with the bartender, which is usually me, <laughs> is that they think I'm with the damn caterer. Oh, right. I, I'm not what I shot out here by myself. Right. So yes. they asking me about uh, stuff I have a no idea because about. Because a lot of times when you yeah. go to these events, the caterer usually brings the in the bartender. I can understand that. Or they ask but the DJ. But goddamn it, ask. Or they ask DJ. I've been to a wedding reception. And they was like, "So what's next?" I was like, "Uh, I don't know. I'm finna play the music." Right. <laughs> like, it, man, let me tell you something. H having the right kind of wedding coordinator is very important. No, everybody knowing their roles are very important, and because it, it's very distasteful. Like, this is the thing. Especially when it's the 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 groom's folks. Mm -hmm. I have seen it go real bad. Real, real quick. quick. Real <laughs> quick. When it was the groom's people. Now you know, cause I don't know why it's a difference. When it's the when the when the woman has done everything, I guess she feel like okay, I can just blame myself. Mm -hmm. But when the husband step in and say, My cousin can do this, my friend can do this, and they don't deliver. They right. they they uh they overplay it and under deliver. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, yeah. So was, be careful with that, please. I was the coordinator for my own shit when I got married because I just knew how I that's, was. But that's crazy as hell. But yeah. I did. I found people to do what I needed to do. But I coordinated my own wedding, and at the at the actual wedding event, I had some. I told somebody else what to do and from then beginning they, to end sometimes yeah that's what i had to do from beginning to end if you're gonna let somebody be a wedding coordinator let them do their damn job i was my <laughs> wedding coordinator <laughs> I, I can't the last wedding that we went to where the person was their own wedding coordinator dj lab can tell you it was a whole hot ass mess hot meaning literally was just and hot. it was burning up no air my in the middle of July, down, it was so hot. And I'm talking about, yeah. So it's so it, there's when, when you when you're a bride and you want a ceremony, right? Baby, don't I, try to do all of that yourself. I tried to hire a coordinator when I got married. The coordinator wasn't coordinating, so I had to fire. Now her it's ass. a billion coordinators yes, out right here. There. Well, you know, you but you remember, I was a kid when I got married. I remember that, but I'm talking about. The, what I have witnessed, the 
baby, get you a, a, a well-renowned co wedding coordinator, somebody that's going to make your dreams come true, because if you don't, you're going to regret it. Don't get uh, Shaniqua cousin. All right, all right. Baby, I have the, I did a wedding reception <laughs> one time. The girl was frying chicken, and mm -hmm. the wedding was going on. At the wedding? <laughs> was the chicken even done? The, 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 the uh, bride was frying chicken. The bride was not frying chicken. It was the, the groom the had hired his childhood friend oh, to cater Lord. the event. And they were already like an hour late starting the event finally the caterer get there and ain't no chicken fried you got these beans that you got out of the can the can oh hell no in my yeah. rhyme camera exactly you got these these beans that you got out the can and ain't got nothing to go on no salt no pepper no. you know what i went to a wedding that was, I don't like it. That was in Clay County. <laughs> I refuse to believe that that shit is okay. Lab. I went to a wedding. Now I that you can't. say that, I went to one that was a storefront, one of them little storefront events, halls, you know what I'm talking about? They be in the mm -hmm. plaza. I went to one, and when we got there, they started cooking. They was cooking during the wedding. So when I left out, you I smelled like, like the guy that. Yeah. When I left that, I smelled like a barrel of fried chicken. Yeah. I re I, now that you say that, I was like, what is happening? Because the kitchen... That was the craziest thing in the world to me. That these, these, these folk waited until... They got there. They got there to fry the chicken. It was like the event was on. It was only one big room. So the event was... The wedding was happening here. And then next door was... Say that room over there was the kitchen. And then we had this little bitty corner right there where the couch Get you, get you, get you a, um, a wedding coordinator and get but you some people one. with contracts. Let me just say this. When, when you, when you book me to bartend your party, you're going to get a contract. That contract is going to tell me, going to tell you how much we agreed on to pay. And it's going to tell you what's all included. Don't come up to me. I automatically bring certain things to events because I know these are things that people will forget mm -hmm. and have to send somebody out for. Mm -hmm. Ice is one. So I, I always come with my own ice. I always come with my own set of cups to start everything off. And I come with my straws because I know, you know, this. these are things that people will forget and have to send somebody back for. But baby, after I don't use a pack, a pack of 50 cups, please don't ask me do I have any more. Oh, wow. Because I wasn't supposed to bring them anyway. What we doing? Right. You got the same contract I got because I made you. Right. And if you told me your event starts at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. I'm going to get that at 4. No later than 415. Now that time before five o'clock is not included in your four hours that I have told you I will be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Ain't my fault you didn't start at six o'clock. Right. I, well, I get ready to go and everybody look at, well, where are you going? I bartend for four hours. Right. Unless you want to pay more. More. Right. They don't understand that. They don't understand that. Like even oh, when I DJ. Well it, well, it was we started like. Baby, that don't have any. What do with me? Baby, I've been here since four fifteen. At five thirty, I was really livid that y'all hadn't got started, but I didn't say nothing because this ain't my event, and I was gonna be here till nine o'clock anyway. Right. So just because y'all got started it after the time that you told me the party start, that don't elongate my time being here. The, the one thing that they say to me when I DJ that I don't like is. I gonna play no music while we clean up. Hell no, I gotta go. I gotta clean up. <laughs> like, don't you see all these chords I had to bring and all this so what, shit? So like, what no. I suggest for the DJ, and this is just me, is to possibly get a Bluetooth speaker. No, I got Bluetooth speakers. I'm not doing what this. I, what I'm because saying. Because you would need to charge more for that. What I'm saying is, if that's, I'm just saying, it could be a part of, I don't know, but People charge like, more. Like, people I, I not people speakers. If you want me to play music during the cleanup, it's gonna be a cleanup fee. Like that's you, the cleanup fee. Because okay. regardless, like, regardless, regardless, if they clean up and I play a Bluetooth speaker, I still got you clean up. 
and how long is it, I, I still got to get my stuff together. Right. And how long is it going to take them to clean up? Because regardless... I'm leaving when I'm done. When I'm done, my right? Shit. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying stay any longer. The only thing I'm saying is like I don't know. I, I just don't know, but I, I do understand. That's outside of your four hours, right? Because I, I don't went, know. Well, you DJ, you 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 go for four hours too, or how does that go for you? Well, they tell me how long it's going to be. Right. I ask how long first before I even give them a price. I went to okay. Because uh, um, there's no set me, four hours. Like it's no set. It's no set. Um. Like, I don't do four-hour minimums. Like, they say, well, it's going to be a three-hour party. Okay, well, it's going to be this price for three hours. Yeah, now, I, if it's I somebody don't I know, do no more than four right. unless they pay right. for now, the Now, I've done six-hour parties, which I is fine, but they pay the six-hour price. Yeah, I have I have done a few six-hour six hour parties, and that's what made me come up with I don't want to do over four hours, mm. period. Like, if you want to pay what I charge to go over four hours, I'm okay with that. But it's going to be real inconveniencing because I don't want to be here longer so than four, four hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. And the main reason um, is because, honestly, after like the third hour, most people are where they want to be anyway when it mm -hmm. comes to alcoholic beverages at your event. Right. right. And I went Best to... That's they got um, to drive home. Exactly. I went to an event. So that's what I'm thinking about them having to sober up before actually leaving. Uh huh. Juneteenth. I went to an event for Juneteenth. It was supposed to be like an all white party. So they had the DJ, and the DJ got up and left. So because they started almost two hours late. When we got there, they hadn't even set up yet. Uh -huh. I was like, what is happening right now? I was like, I'm already late. And y'all mm -hmm. still haven't even set up. So the DJ was in there. He was playing music and everything. So um, the DJ mm -hmm. went to his time frame and he left. And yeah. everybody was like, yeah. where the DJ going? What? No. Because yeah. other people don't understand. Like, And that's fine. But that's up to you as the party person to explain to them what happened. And he did. He was like, well, I only paid him for three hours and his three hours is up. They was like, but y'all was two hours late. If y'all knew y'all only had this DJ for three hours, why would y'all be two, two hours, hours late? late? That ain't got nothing to do with the DJ. <laughs> no, not, but, unless you're, not unless you're coming out of pocket with some more change. And that's what like, the that's people how, were complaining most, about. See, my thing is, you never know what a person has to do after your event. But that's why the people were complaining because they was like, why would you be late two hours when you knew you had only paid this DJ three hours? So we only getting started an hour when the DJ is leaving and now we ain't got no music. Period. Let me tell you something. So they DJ, was complaining. Loading them speakers, all that stuff in that car, the DJ booth, your, your amps and your mixers and all that stuff in that car and taking it back out and all that is a hassle it's in a itself. Lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they weren't they weren't saying anything to the DJ. They were complaining to the person who was holding what? the event because they was like, "Y'all two hours late, and y'all knew y'all had only paid this person this amount of time." Why was y'all? I, I I can't. I just oh, and then can't get with and it. the chef was cooking there too. I can't get with it. Look what I got, y'all. What you got? I don't know. Some from the pretty box. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I got Hello, this. gorgeous. I have arrived. I know, right? Ain't that cute? Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. Hold on. I said, what's that? She said, I don't know. I said, what? I, I don't know. They, uh, they hit me up on Instagram <laughs> and asked me. Don't laugh, laugh. You know I'm special. And asked me. <laughs> wait a minute, girl. Hey, wait a minute. Girl. <laughs> Let's see what's all in. I don't know. We finna see, though. Okay, so pretty box, your present. May happiness follow you wherever you go. Unlocking pretty one box at a time. That's cute. Uh, the packaging, the what? Ah! Wait a minute. Thank you for supporting my small business, baby. We're speaking increase because this is not a small business. Right. At the pretty box. Oh. Got to be some hell girl. Got to be some hell girl. <laughs> Anybody who know me know. <laughs> Baby, send me some hell. Okay. Some okay. And it's a blonde. And it's blonde. Blum bum shawl. Mm. Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's short. Hmm. I'm going to have to 
half of it, y'all see me in this. You don't do about some video? Half of it, hugs. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Say hug, her hair is too big for we. Too long for that shit. <laughs> this is cute though. I gotta see how I look in short hair. Mm. I ain't want no short hair in a long time. But I'm thank you, the pretty pretty box. Unlocking pretty one box at a time, that's baby. Right, that's of right. course, you know I'm going to do me a um a TikTok too. Thank you. And but look though, they must have known. <laughs> then what I've been trying to do. Uh, I'm trying it wise. You ever <laughs> love? <laughs> trying it. <laughs> ah, okay. Right. Got me a waist trainer. Thank you, pretty box. <laughs> Thank you, girl. I love it. So what I have realized is, so it's been a, um, almost close to a year since I stopped smoking, right? Mm -hmm. And Lord have mercy. I have gained... You replaced it with snacks. Man, what? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I have gained so much weight since I stopped smoking. You replaced it with snacks. And... I got to figure this thing out, so thank you for my aunt. Oh, that's so cute. The pretty box. Mm. Thank mm. you. You gotta uh I got to show y'all how when I put it <laughs> on and all that stuff, honey, because I'm finna say the hair is yours, the waist trainer is hers. Oh hell <laughs> <laughs> but she don't need to train her waist. She I need to train my waist. <laughs> now her waist is just fine. Right, right. Or somebody outside. But baby, mine is right. out of control. Right. But I sure do appreciate you, Pretty Box. The Pretty Box, y'all go check them out. And, um, they actually hit me up on, like I said, on um, IG. And um, didn't ask a whole lot of questions, but was just like, where can I send products to? And I wanted to do this unboxing on air because that's something that we take a lot of pride in. We um, are always looking for sponsors. Now that the Pretty Box has sent us something, she's officially, we're officially a sponsor of hers and she's a sponsor of ours. So that means that we'll reach out to her to get um, her logo so that we can actually add it to some of the things that we yeah. actually do. Why are we got to look in so the whole yeah. Is it? <laughs> oh wow, I have to do better. Sorry you guys. But yeah, man, so um, Pretty Boss, thank you so much. And we're actually gonna um, get ready to get started with the second part of our um, our show. I have been speaking on it all week, and um, hi. I've been speaking on it all week. And uh, we want to welcome them in. So if you guys give me a few minutes, I'm actually gonna go off live on my personal live. Not Miss Fitz Radio Live, but my live. I'm gonna go off of it and I'm gonna come back. Hey, fattest man, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah so um, I went off live on my page, uh -huh. but I know that we're still live here. So, we actually have our, um, the second part of our show is about to get started. So, me personally, I'm going to get up and move around. So lab, I don't know if you and Kay want to. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, you want to play music? Uh, I think I'm going to play music. Play okay. music. You want to talk about something? You got something you want to talk about? I'm going to be good at the back. Okay, okay, okay. So right, what I'm going to so. do is I'm going to put this disclaimer up about the show. And I'm going to let music play in the background when I'm going to turn y'all mics up. How about that? Okay. So Sounds how, good. How about how that works? Yeah. Um, give me one second to find the music. We're going to play stuff we allow to play. Right. So what is that? Independent artists? Yeah. Stuff that's not going to get us blocked. But the only thing about that is, even they use some things from... Yeah, we don't get blocked as quick. Well, maybe I should just go on our live then. We could. And come back. And come back, yep. What, what you think? Well, you know, no, just just some independent artist music, so we ain't got to um get all the people back in. Okay, um, hold on one second. Let me find something. So uh, yeah, so so the amount. Oh, somebody at the front door. Go out to the front door. The front door? Yeah, somebody at the front door. Really? Yeah. Okay, give me a few minutes. 
Yeah, I'm gonna play some music, y'all, on, on Instagram and Facebook. Then we'll come back um, and go from there. But uh, stick around. Don't stick around. Whatever. All right. Flat. <laughs> Party with me, we gon' laugh on the beach. Yeah, just me and my team. Letting go, living free. To the sky when we reach. Going up like gas prices, but we ain't never on need. No, no, no. Can't go back to being broke. Yeah, that's a fact. That's what I know. If you invited, be ready for a show. Cause you know how we do it. Pull out your camera phone. I'm the director of this movie So shorty, can you take it slow in a two-piece? See the look up in her eyes, she wanna party Come on Do you wanna come to my beach party? Do you wanna come to my beach party? I know you wanna come to the party I promise you'll have fun at my beach party Do you wanna come to my Jason in the past life You ain't Super Mario You playing with your last life 
a different breed. Shout out to you, a dub, my young niggas. And they been schooled on how to deal with all you dumb niggas. Far from stupid, but I'm crazy as they come, nigga. I'm with my trunk, niggas. Never the bomb, niggas. I rep the slums with them. Gangsters, I run with them. Haters, I'm done with them. Bitches, have fun with them. No retreat, no surrender. If I play it, I'm winning. If I want it, I get it. I'm the shit. I'm the shit. I'm the shit. I'm the shit. Come over here, boy, let me break it off some proper like life. Good. Ain't talk about no church of chicken, no zasp of chicken, no straight pop pie, pie. I got the bone, cushy, make push, make chick to my side. Happy birthday, my name's Show. Bring the check, boy, let's Come ride. On. I'm the number one freaking that hand down But you gotta break my to get my pant down Ain't talk about a lunch date, no movie date Big facts now right. You ain't about wanna stand, need to bounce now Gonna take more than to hold my house down Cause I got mouths to feed, goes to meet that That's now I got that sloppy, sloppy, that gushy, gushy That wet, wet, that fire head, do a head check Babe, Hoover wanna throw your girl a check Suck you up like a vacuum cleaner My head no misdemeanor I be coming like a felon, step you thought ahead with fire Yo, the coochie me Shake that ass, roll them hips, get a low Shabby made it to a Lambo Had a little 380, now I got a Rambo Hundred round drum, never running out of ammo Started with a crumb, now got more than I could ask for Started with a box, Chevy made it to a Lambo Had a little 380, now I got a Rambo Hundred round drum, never running out of ammo Started with a crumb, now I got more than I could ask for Got money out my asshole, collect my 200, I am Pasco Just my PM Fast folk, laughing niggas, talk shit, clapping niggas. Ain't shit funny, I ain't laughing with you. Ready up, ready up, ready up. I'ma take the bag and I'ma ready to do it. I'ma take the check and I'ma catch it out. I'ma take the bag and I'ma ready to do it. I'ma take the check and I'ma catch it out. Check up, check up, check up, check up. Whip so sick, need to check up. Check up, check up, check up. If you get into the check, throw your hands up. From the check, black smoke, blowing out my nose. I bought it from the check. Keep a check, let's let go. I don't like to write no check. Just sign it in my name, then I'm cashing out the check. Give a big give respect, I'ma put it in check. Better with your turn, cause you know that I'm next. I can get what I want, I ain't even got a black. I'm with it, I ain't even got a black. I'm dead. Hold up, let me get up. No must of my cash up. I'm a bad check. I'm reaching. Got me a sizzle on the weekend. Monday through Friday, she be feeling. No, I got the stress, Willie Beeman. Right, but the city only.
give a fuck if they Geek dog, I'm the Henny and I'm Perkies You a pussy boy, pull up your skirt Spill the lean all on my fucking shirt Wait, Play with Glizzy, ho, you will get murdered, bitch Before you taste, say your motherfucking grace What is it, Lab? I don't know. They're around. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're around. Don't, hey, don't get me the line. <laughs> hey, hey y'all. We back, y'all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't get me the line. So, I don't know exactly where they at, but hey. You always ask about um, the independent artists that we have been playing for a while because sometimes they'll still show up on my social media, but I don't see them doing music anymore. So that's what we was talking about when we welcomed the show back in. I was asking Lev about an artist that, um, that I just heard him play. But man, we greatly appreciate you guys for um, for tapping in. Once again, this is the second half of Westside Misfit Show. That's right. You can catch us here most Sundays at uh, 3 o'clock p.m. And I want to take the time out to introduce you guys to somebody. Because I'm pretty sure you all may have seen the um, the ad that I put up earlier today. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hold on. <laughs> Don't disturb my my uh, memory like that. No, we live. Exactly. No, we live. No, she only been be she only been here. On, she's only been on the show about twenty five times. I mean, like real deal. Okay. Hold on a second. But um, before we allow Kay to come in, I want um our guests to actually introduce themselves, and we'll go into some of the reasons why they're here. Can we hear from you, Miss Hallman? Hi, my name's Anitra Hallman. And I'm um, Mauli Davis. I'm an attorney with the Davis Bozeman Johnson Law Firm. Say that one more time, the David? Davis Bozeman Johnson Law Firm. So we're the largest African-American firm in the state that does plaintiffs and civil rights work. I was actually just about to add that on. Right. That's why I wanted you to say the name again, man. We see you we see you all out in the community doing a lot of great things. And um, before we get started, I just want to tell you guys, thank you for that. Absolutely. Right. Our community needs it. it. Most definitely. I was like, come on now. Honey. Exactly. No, seriously, <laughs> because our community needs it, man. The, um, one of the things that I noticed, I'm born and raised in Atlanta, is that we don't a lot of times we don't utilize our resources because we don't know about them. Right? That's right. So when you get attorneys that's in our community that's actually showing face saying, hey, I can help you with that. It means a lot because in all honesty, we're conditioned as black people not to need anybody. Right. True. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And, it's, and it's, not, and it's not the blame game or anything like that. That's how a lot of us were raised. Mm -hmm. What happens here stays here. You know, so we have to, um, at this point in the game, it's 2023, we have to dismiss some of the things and unlearn some of the things that we came up, you know, kind of knowing and kind of, uh, and because we at, at an age now where we realize that a lot of those things are unhealthy. Yeah. So we appreciate you so much for, um, you know, for stepping in and, and helping the Holloman family because I've been knowing Anitra well over 20 years now. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. 45. Mm -hmm. Like I met a ninja in the eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Bring back good memories. But and we've done a lot of things over the years together. We've um, fed the hungry and homeless. We've, we've done just a lot of things in the community. And for what happened to your father, yes. Deacon Johnny Holloman Sr. That's right. A few weeks ago, it's very disheartening. Someone that was actually born and raised here, someone that was actually, um, that have poured a, a lot into the community as well. And it's just really, really disheartening. I'm, I will allow you to elaborate on what actually happened a few weeks ago. But before we do that, I also want to give you my deepest condolences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our deepest condolences. Thank you. Most definitely. Yeah, because when, as soon as I spoke with Anitra, the very first thing a lot of people know me from is from my father being killed in the line of duty as an APD officer. Mm. So I know from the aspect of where he where, where he did the policing, it has changed drastically. Mm. Mm -hmm. My daddy was killed in 87 and his belief was that honestly black people should police black people mm -hmm. because when a black police officer see you, he see you as a brother. Right. He don't see you as a threat. 
or, or, or his son or, or his son correct right, right. so, so what well, well, mm -hmm. in the in the 80s let me just say that in the 80s mm -hmm. that's what policing was about right right it was getting in the community and you wanted to police your people because you felt like at least if i can't do nothing else i can at least help them mm -hmm. if i can avoid arresting my brother and give him some sound advice and i see that it makes a difference, I'd rather do that versus using these tactics and the things that we've been taught to use on somebody that look like me. Right. Unfortunately, the idea of that policing is gone. It is. Yes. It is. Yes. The idea is gone and I don't know I don't I don't know where the idea of the, the being disrespectful comes into play because I can be honest with you under 25 we did some things that didn't make sense but when we saw an older person it was some things we weren't gonna do right. Right. in right. front of that older person right we weren't doing no cussing we weren't oh, we weren't doing no disrespecting in front of somebody who we knew or felt like could be our grandparent mm -hmm. so that's why i say the idea of what's going on now and what we're accepting in our community is a little bit different but I think some some things never change, mm -hmm. and that respect should never change. That's the problem. People don't have respect. On it should, it should mm -hmm. never change. So, um, Miss Holland, tell me exactly. Well, not exactly because you don't know exactly. All the thing you know is what what you know. Right. But tell me what transpired the night that um, Deacon Holloman was actually unalived mm -hmm. mm. so I get the phone call now this is August the 10th so like the first well you know I see my dad August the 10th so of course it's a Thursday we have Bible study live on Facebook you know mm -hmm. live the songs of God you know I get out there and talk about my church ministry but right. uh, we dad was at the house he got ready to leave he was like baby you know blow his horn they the one down baby I'm finna go I see you tomorrow. I was like, all right, Dad, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I said, I love you. He said, I love you too. So he drove off. And then about 20 minutes later, he called me. He said, baby, somebody done hit my dog on truck. I said, they hit your truck, Daddy. What you can't? He said, I was just about to turn into the parking lot at the house. He said, they don't hit my dog on truck again. I said, what? I said, you all right? You need me to come? He said, no, nah, I'm okay. You ain't got to come. I said, okay. I said, well, just call me back and let me know you know what's going on. So. He said, all right, I'll let you know. He said, I'm about to call the police. I said, okay. So I waited, and it got to be probably like an hour later. It's like, now it's like 10, 23. Um, he said, <clears throat> baby, he said, I'll call you back. He said, the police ain't showed up. Then he said, hold on, wait a minute. They just came. He said, but let me just get out and see what the police talking about. I said, okay, get out, see what the police talking about. And then um, he, the phone, you know, he hung up the phone. So I waited for a while. I said, well, I guess everything worked all right. Because this is what I'm thinking in my mind. He hadn't called, like, right back to say anything different. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing him looking at the TV, you know. And, um, you know, you watching some. And I was a little tired, too. I kept dozing off, waking right. back up. Because I was like, I got to hear from my daddy before I, I completely go to, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So I'm laying across the bed. And then I get a phone call. So I look at the phone. I'm like, hey, let me the cell. I said, Number this year, I said, Look, I don't have time. Nobody calling me this time of night. Right. It's 1157. Because, see, mind you, it wasn't coming from the phone number that's programmed my phone that say daddy. But some just said, Answer the phone. Mm -hmm. So I answer the phone. It's 1157. When I answer the phone, I hear somebody saying, Baby, baby. I'm like, Huh? I said, Daddy. But when I'm saying, Daddy, I didn't know that during this time he had done sat the phone down. Well, after he had called out, baby, but you know from looking at the video um i see what he had placed it on truck so i hear this officer he just talking all outright he aggressive to my daddy i hear my daddy saying i ain't do nothing wrong you know um you really gonna treat an old man like me like this and you know daddy was like you know i asked for your sergeant and he just going away that you know just like real unprofessional using profanity and you know he yelling at him he hollering so you know me that's my daddy I don't care who you is, cause don't disrespect him. Right. So I'm hollering back through the phone as if he can hear me. I'm like, "What you talking to my daddy like that for? Don't be talking to him like that." I'm like, "Daddy." So I'm hollering, but you know, I'm, I ain't getting no response, cause he don't the hear what I'm saying. Down. The phone right. is down. So daddy, but he, you know, he left it on speaker so that I could hear. So 
I don't think that the officer knew that the phone was on speaker. He knew he was calling somebody, but you don't know whether or not they picked up. Right. Because, like, right in it, it, like, went right into what was going on. So, of course, you know, like me, I get, jump up. I'm running out the house. My brother and my niece was sitting on my porch. So, I was like, Bo, they, you know, because I call him Bo, but it's he or Junior. His name is Johnny Junior. So, I was like, Bo, somebody doing something to daddy. He was like, who? So, I was like, I don't know, but I got to get over here to wait. But just so happened. When he first called me, I asked him where he was, and he was like, I'm right here on Cunningham mm. and Josie Lyra. So, mind you, if I had not asked him that, I wouldn't have known where know he where was. To go. So, I didn't. I would have known where he was, you know, where his location was. So, because mind you, his phone went dead. So, now you own just a secondary minute phone that you was talking on. Oh, Yeah, okay. so that's what I'm saying. It was never, like, his main primary phone. Right. So, we do all that, and then I, I get in the car, so... I literally had done left my brother. He running behind my car. I was like, you better catch up because, you, know, you know, that's my daddy. Right. I got to go. So I finally let him in. I'm still on two wheels going on down. And I said, don't hang up that phone. Leave that phone on. So now my brother like, what, what going on with Pop? What you doing to my Pop? You know, so he hollering the phone. So I was like, nah, bro, let me just heal. Let me keep listening. So I hear my daddy, you know, telling him he can't breathe. I hear my daddy, you know, asking for help. So you're actually listening. I'm listening to all of it on the phone for Damn. those 17 minutes and 46 seconds. I'm listening to the whole entire thing. I even heard when my daddy asked for the help for the very last time. Mm. And I didn't so, hear him anymore. So when you arrived on the scene, was it chaotic then? Or? Very much so. Okay. It was like, you know, you see all these lights there. Well, I actually pulled up behind the fire truck. You know, and then when I get out, my brother's like, so you need to record this. I was like, no, I can't hang up the phone. You record. I said, because I got to get up here. So my brother, he running in front of me. I'm coming up behind him. And as soon as we get there, it's like, I know it's at least 10, 12 officers. They just like around him. You see this one paramedic just beating him in his chest. He going up. You know, his body is lifeless. And so my first words were, y'all motherfuckers done killed my dad. I, I said it exactly like that. Right. And I'm like loud with it. So, and then I was like, y'all killed him. I heard it. I heard it. I know you killed him. Mm -hmm. And so I went around because they would not let me physically get to him. Like I'm trying to get to where he had on the ground. My brother was like, y'all wrong. Y'all doing my pops like that. So he started recording. So I reached over and I grabbed the phone. So when I reached over and grabbed the phone, I came back around. I'm still trying to get to him but because I'm so outright now. You know, finally they pick him up. You know, and then they, they put them on the stretcher and then they send them across the street to where the ambulance was. So at this point, I'm still like going in. I'm like, I know, I know, I just don't know which one it was. I said, but it was one of y'all, y'all killed my dad. I felt it in my spirit. I never met, when I went to the hospital, I already knew he was gone, but I looked at him and my dad has always been the type. If he has an asthma attack, he's been in a diabetic coma, close to it, whatever. If he hears my voice, and he's told me that many times, this is not his first time being down. And he was like, babe, it's something about your voice that always bring me back. Mm -hmm. When I kept yelling for him and he didn't come back, I knew mm -hmm. it in my heart he was gone. And it was like, I was angry, but then I was numb. I was hurt. Like, I was feeling a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, because to actually hear, you know, to actually hear all of this stuff going on, not being able to do anything about it and you don't live far from the accident scene yeah. so it didn't how long did it take you maybe about 15 minutes yeah that's what i'm up? saying even in 15 because you got measured now i had to get up you know run out the house right so that's what i'm saying the phone call lasted that long so it could have took me anywhere from 12 to, you know 10 to 12 okay. minutes to get there like literally i'm driving so fast to it was an actual police behind me, so I thought when he had put his blue lights on, they were for me. But I was like, well, baby, you got to follow me all the way to the scene. Right. Because I'm going to see about my daddy, and I'm not stopping for nobody. I, and I, and I, I didn't. Me. And I kept going. I pushed the gas all the way down. My brother was like, so, uh-uh, because we going to get here. Right. So it's like when I get here and I seen it, but it, like I said, I was just all over the place. So I stayed. Even when they was like, you can go, I was like, no, nah, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be right here. So you, now you heard your daddy ask for, well, not necessarily... You didn't hear him the first time ask for a sergeant, but you heard him mention that, he that he'd ask mm -hmm. for a sergeant. Mm -hmm. So no, no, you, no, no, no. I can hear him ask for the sergeant. So you actually, yeah. Have, so for you, for him to deny, for this police officer to deny mm -hmm. him ask. receiving a sergeant, and you get there and all these police on the scene, mm -hmm. and not one of them was still a sergeant. I mean, nobody would talk to me. Cause it's like once I said that they killed him, it's like at that point everybody started either going to their cars 
or they start moving data out and then you had this one officer um she came up she said listen she said i know you upset she said i just got on the scene she said i'll help you she said let me go find out what i could find out she went to talk to somebody and when she came back she was like hold on next thing i know y'all bringing the yellow tape taping around it wasn't even Five to ten minutes after y'all pull over with my daddy, I get a call from Grady, the nurse. And then they said, oh, well, when you get here, ask for the social worker. Of course, I already know what that was about. Right. So then I hung up. So then she came to talk to me. She was like, well, somebody from GBI, they going to come and speak to you. She was like, you know, I don't really have no information. I just got here. She was like, I'm just roping it off the make sure secure. She said, but if you want to, you can go on and go to the hospital. She said, and your brother could stay here. Or your brother could go and you could stay. I said, no, nah, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay right here, right here to see what's going on. Because see, right. well, my daddy, you know, and in my mind, you know, because we grow up in the church. So we spiritual. So I'm saying in my mind, he good where he at. Right. I'm staying here because I need to see what y'all doing. Exactly. Because I need to know what y'all doing. Because do you know how disheartening that is? Because this is my thing. If I arrive and it's 10 to 12 officers there, why couldn't that be, have been granted when he asked for it? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't... And he only asked for one. Mm -hmm. Let me have your sergeant. You're not treating me fair. Mm -hmm. Let me have somebody above you that, that, that would know how to talk to a man like me because I'm not disrespecting you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and this is going to circle back around to what you said. How many of them were of color? The officers were on color um, on the scene. So the officer who killed him mm -hmm. was a black, young black, 23-year-old officer. Wow. wow. Yeah. And that's that's the point is the very thing that you raised around what community policing used to be. Right. When 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 black people just got on the Atlanta police force and could only could, could only police the black community, that was different from mm -hmm. what we have now. Yeah. Now we have this militarized mm -hmm. soldier mindset. Mm -hmm. They they coming and moving in and occupying space, right? Mm -hmm. They're moving like the occupiers of our communities, mm -hmm. not like they're a part of the community. And so right. the way they, so we watched the video. Mm -hmm. um, and when we watched the video, I was just stunned that a 23-year-old African-American could talk to a 62-year-old deacon yes. that way. Right, it, just it, disrespect. Respectful. It didn't make any, but but it. No, but you gotta let him finish. Let it, let him, cause I didn't get through the whole five minutes. He'll tell you. I just let him. From know. from from the beginning oh. to the end. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, he's telling him, lower your voice. He's telling Deacon Holloman, lower your voice. What? Don't you know, like like you know, like why you yelling at me? Like he was talking to him like a child. Mm -hmm. And so, the, what what we have to realize is that there's no other place as a community where a 23-year-old African-American would talk to a 62-year-old except, except in police. He had just pulled completely away from our culture, right? Our culture says you gotta, you're responsible and you, you connect with our people. That culture says I'm the boss and I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how uh, fragile, elderly, elderly you are, I don't have to respect you. Mm -hmm. And the whole video just showed disrespect. He was so out of control when Mr. Holliman says, I'll sign a ticket, because all of this was about him signing a ticket, mm -hmm. right? So when he says, I'll sign a ticket, he grabs his arm. He mm -hmm. doesn't even let him sign a ticket. He's reaching to try to sign a ticket. Yes. He won't even let him sign a ticket. Mm -hmm. He grabs his arm, twists behind his back, and then does a leg sweep to take him to the ground yeah. and he goes face down on the ground then he's forcing his face into the asphalt and then he's yelling you're gonna sign a ticket you're gonna sign a ticket he's just totally out of his mind so how, how long was the video they only showed us five minutes of it they showed us from the time he started to the time he to the to the time that to just be honest with you, his Deacon Holloman's hands kind of went limp. They that's and then they stopped it, so they didn't show anything after that. But really? we wanted to see. We want to see everything. We think the community should see everything. Absolutely. We think that there should be a level of transparency, like there is and like there was in Tyree Nichols, Absolutely. like there was in George Floyd. Absolutely. This is a significant 
because it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Deacon Holliman didn't have, he didn't do anything mm -hmm. to try to fight this officer. He didn't do anything. He didn't have a weapon. So they can't use the normal excuses. Yeah. Oh, I thought he had a gun or mm -hmm. something. No. no. And then he was tasing him. Exactly. So he has him on the ground and he's tasing yeah. him. While he's doing all of this. He's tasing him, right? And he's stunning him. What? And he's, you know, putting it in his side and he's yelling. It, I mean, and then he punches him. I mean, it's just, okay. it's just an all like, outright assault on him. That's an assault. And, and it's like you're going to bully him. Is you're 23 and you have pulled up on a, ax, a minor accident. A minor accident. accident. Yes. That went and a 62-year-old yep. gets out and, you know, t starts talking to you. You at, was he Sir, the, was you he the know that you were the overpowered. He's the only officer initially. Like, okay. And it, it was just no reason. So why why is this, I guess the city of Atlanta, why are they not releasing the entire Their position and, and the city's position is that because it's an open investigation, they're hiding behind that. But, but there have been organizers for years mm -hmm. that have been trying to get the city to adopt a policy that you, within 72 hours, you show it to the family. Within two weeks, you release it to the community. Right. That's very reasonable. By then, all the witnesses have been interviewed, so it can't impact them. Mm -hmm. Just do it. It's that's, the right thing. That's more than reasonable. With the city, <coughs> with, with the city of Atlanta growing mm -hmm. the right. way that they've allowed it to grow. Yes. Right? Because they're definitely allowing you all to welcome in all of these people. From all over. From everywhere. And not even thinking about the ones that's been here. That's right. See, and that's that's where the the it comes into play with me. When you've been born and raised somewhere like Atlanta, you have an advantage over a lot of other people that have come here because mm -hmm. you know about a lot of the things that we come from. Mm -hmm. yes. You you respect the culture. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that, that you you just move different. That's right. right. So for the city of Atlanta to be welcoming in all of these people, you hired this twenty three year old. That's right. And you you, you had him, but what, what happened to yeah. the training? No, like, he, had, see, he had the training. He, that's the thing. He that's the, the misnomer. So they yeah. got. It's not the training, y'all. So it's him. That's what they it's run. Him. No, no, it's not him. It's the culture of policing, right? Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. culture. So they say, here's how you de de escalate. Mm -hmm. But the culture says you don't have to respect them. That's right. And in fact, you don't have to respect them. And I'll show you that you don't have to respect them because every time there's an investigation into any abuse, they never do a real thorough investigation. It doesn't result in termination yeah. and it doesn't result in arrest. And so yeah. if it, just like in any situation, if you see you can get away with something and know. this is the way that this is the way you're supposed to behave, then you're going to continue to do it. And that's what the that's why the whole department is responsible for Deacon Holloman's death. Not just that one officer. All of them. He only been on the force for about two, ye two years. Two years. So he was 21 when he started. Two what? years. And and look, during this time, he what? has, this is his sixth complaint. I remember we talked about that, yeah. He had five previous yeah, complaints. Six. And the, the problem is, is that and they, did they didn't act on it. They didn't right? act on the previous mm -hmm. ones. They just let us slip They under just the let rug. it keep going. And mm -hmm. this is what all of that leads to. When you, when you allow behavior to continue, it ends up manifesting as something that's even more detrimental, right. Mm -hmm. right? And that's what we that's what we're dealing with. What happened to the, the the person that hit your father? Where was he at or she at during this whole time frame? He was standing off, uh, and he recorded some of it, but he was not in a position to capture. He didn't like mm. where he was positioned. He could just mm -hmm. see like underneath mm -hmm. Mr. Ho Deacon Holliman's truck. Mm -hmm. okay. And so he was recording it, oh. and he he was deeply disturbed. Yes. We had a chance to meet with him, and he was like, "I, I just couldn't believe that somebody that lost their that life. Yes. That, that somebody that lost that their life. Yeah, in a in an accident." He said he didn't think he caused the accident. Deacon Holliman didn't think he caused the accident, but he definitely didn't think it was yeah. going to lead to nobody getting killed. Because yeah, it shouldn't have. Would, yeah, because I think even, you know, in that moment, and I thought about that too. I don't know. The Holy Spirit just brought that back to me. I was thinking of this guy because I was like, you know, now he having to live with that. Oh, yeah. Right. For the rest right. Of his life. That's so what I was asking On some about point, him. he feel guilty as well because you mind you, my dad, he called up the police and this guy, he called the police as well. But then this guy, you turn around and you call again. 
See, sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen when you encounter with these polices mm -hmm. and the way, like they said, they police. You know, and I know, Donna, we had the conversation, you know, and we just talking about it. You know, it ain't even about a racism thing anymore. It's just it's the culture. culture. And, right. the, you know, and then the way that they are raised, but then we can't even look at the way they raised anymore because you go through this academy and this training, like, you know, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff is out the door. Now, you you, you dealing with what they telling you to do. But Forget how you was raised. That's over. Calling the police should, should just, just to me, should not be a death sentence. Yeah. I not. pray every time a police run on the scene and when my son leaves the house, that mm -hmm. everybody come back home safely. Because believe it or not, my son gets pulled over all the time. Oh, yeah. And the worst part about it is he has more problems with the police of color mm -hmm. than he does with the opposite color. And it shouldn't be that way. No. And he's a firefighter. And a lot of times they give him more grief wow. when he's in uniform yes. than when he's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can I can definitely, um, I can see that. You know, I don't know what we'll have to do in order to change the culture and to change the way policing is. Get rid but, of the union. Yeah, well, and and Man. that part too. Yes. And look, speak on that, bro. Let me tell you the something. The union is yes. not only not only not only that. So we we actually have a um, DA in office now um, that ran a campaign on not prosecuting officers. That's right. If you wrong, you are wrong. Yeah. Exactly. And and. And the thing about it is, regardless of who you are, what you are, if you do something wrong, you should have to pay exactly. for it. But then we also got to be mindful when we get out and vote. You know, you that we got to research these people that we're putting in office. You are correct. You know, and we got to make them stand on what they're saying. So that's why, you know, even when they ask me the question, like, what are you expecting the mayor to do? I'm expecting him to stand on his word. He said that he was for the people. That's so right. So you for the people, for then the people. release that video. Have them to release that video so and that the people forward. can see it mm -hmm. and that we can move forward and get justice for my daddy. Remember, you said you for the people. We voted for you right. based off you being for the people. Mm -hmm. Now let's be for the people. That's right. Release the video. That's what we that's what we want. We want the release of that video so that we can move forward and get justice. That's right, because when I first heard about this entire incident, I told Anitra, I heard about it. My brother sent it to me and was like, Man, this don't sound right. This is mm -hmm. this is before I even knew a name could put a face. My brother was just like, Yeah. Man, this don't sound right. He was like, Did you see this? And I told him, I said, No, I hadn't seen it, but I read it. And I was like, because he sent it to me on Instagram. Okay. And I was like, nah, that don't. He was like, yeah, he said, man. So the very first thing that came to my mind is I just don't like the way they try to portray a person. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, the He's all right. He's yeah. dead. Yeah, he, Combative. He right. And then when, you, when, the, when the video is released, everybody like, oh. He, he told him. He said, my voice is heavy. That's what mm -hmm. Deacon Holloman told him. Yeah. He said, I mean, like, he was like, my voice just heavy. And it is. And it's been like that and, and, whole and you know, so he's trying to tell. He's like the uncle. one trying to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. Right? He's like, my voice just heavy. Mm -hmm. and Especially the, southern men back, you know, southern old men usually voice are heavy. Yeah, and, and he, but that didn't stop this officer. He just kept at it and yeah. kept escalating to the point that why are you yelling, you're going to sign this while you're trying to handcuff him and exactly. tase him. It and then make, daddy had to move back. He even held his hand up. He was stepping back from him like. I ain't even trying to get up on you, you know, because I see. And then he was like, oh, Lord Jesus. Then you made a mark real that, you know, it, telling it, him I don't care if you call your priest or your wife. Like, even in that moment, like, you mm. you, you know, you make like you're making a mark real of his but spiritual. you don't have to sign a ticket. You don't have to sign well, a ticket. Do you what know the I mean? Law, what the law says, and so what, they, what they've what they done as a result of this, and mm -hmm. this, this was a sneak move. Yes. While we were watching the video, they released this change in the policy mm -hmm. so under georgia law you have to you sign the, the ticket, ticket or you go to jail mm -hmm. right but there's a process that the officer has to take you through it's two steps mm -hmm. he never did the second step with deacon holman so he had no basis to even arrest him mm -hmm. ah. there was no basis plus he never said i wasn't gonna sign a ticket he just asked for a supervisor he said can you have your sergeant come out and then that just had the officer just go, nah, you're going to sign the ticket. Basically, you're going to sign the ticket first. And so then when he says three times, Deacon Holderman says, I'll sign the ticket. I'll sign the ticket. I'll sign the ticket. He won't stop then. 
that's when he leg sweeps him and takes him to the ground. So it's just. It, none yeah, of it saying, makes Start sense. resisting. Start resisting. Yeah. Start resisting. Yeah. But yeah. he wasn't like, resisting. What? He not like, even you resisting. It so it could pick up that. Right. But he never were resisting. And once you took him down, it was no way for him to and resist. I never saw this video. I'm just telling you how it goes. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, no. You know the game. Right. right. So right. This is where, what they're trained to do. Right. That's when you, right. When, when I saw my daddy, like, I, I saw him before he left me. So I knew what he looked like. Right. And then I saw him after this happened to him. He looked nothing like what I saw when he left me. And I could even tell like yeah, the handcuffs or wherever you was with his wrist, it discolored his hand. Even before y'all embalmed him or did any of that, his hands his hands were still not even right when he was laying in the casket. And it bothered me and it bothered my spirit so bad. So when I did see the video, I was already feeling some type of way. Absolutely. If you if you just think about I know I'm thinking about it. You see, you don't expect for none of this to go on, first of all. Mm -hmm. You don't expect this because y'all leaving mm -hmm. Bible study. Yeah. We're feeling good. Yes. We done caught on the love. We all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, even with getting the, the call saying, you know, somebody, I don't been in a little film the builder, you still okay with that? You're like, okay, mm -hmm. man, that's material. We can get that fixed, whatever. Yeah. You still okay with that? But to come back around, to an officer hearing an officer be that disrespectful and of course at that time you don't know how old this, this person mm -hmm. is no but to learn that this person is 23 that make that's what that's even worse. like honestly that pours salt mm -hmm. into an open wound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because yeah. not only are you a young and, and, and what we have to understand is even though you have this level of whatever you feel like it is in the city of Atlanta, young officer. You have it here, but if you go anywhere else, you still nigga. Mm -hmm. you so you got to think about, that. yes, you can oh, be yeah. anywhere else and you're still going to be this young black boy that, no, you know what I'm saying, in or out of uniform, yeah. that somebody could, like, why, why are you not thinking about yourself? Why are you not thinking about your grand your grandfather? That's right. Why are uh -huh. you not thinking about your uncles? Uh -huh. You know, and then when I think about him him saying he's talking loud, my uncles talk loud. They yeah. from the south. They, yeah. You know, for some reason they think it doesn't exist until it happens to them. They can they are the ones in charge out there when they put this uniform on and then they don't think it's going to happen to them until it happens to them until they go somewhere. And, and mistreated that, yeah. and disrespected. We get those calls too. Yeah, you know, we, we get calls our office, and and I'll tell you, it's so pervasive in terms of how policing goes mm -hmm. right now. We get calls every day. We can't even take the calls where they may have broken somebody's arm because there are right. so many people that mm -hmm. they are Anna. killing. Yes, right. Yes. Uh, and what's happening in the jail, all of these things, yeah, the whole system, going on in these jails. the whole system is, <laughs> just doesn't humanize us, no, it right? Doesn't. It doesn't allow it doesn't. us to be human beings and we have to stand up against it. That's why it's so important that I've been here 25 years. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from the South Side of Chicago, but my, my people from Villa Rica, <laughs> Georgia, and people Alabama, <laughs> Mississippi, so, you know, to to come to what has been described as the black mecca, mecca right. and to see how over these years yeah, it has it just become become more and more has declined. Just, just disregard mm -hmm. for the people. Yeah. Thank we you. the people. We're the people. Right. And, and, and we used to be we, this way. This right. is the thing. When I first got here, wasn't that vibe? That's, that's my no. whole point in saying when I say that we are welcoming, we have no problem with welcoming people who come here and they see where they can fit in. Respect 25 the years ago, yeah, respect the culture. the culture. Yes. 25 years ago, that's what it was. We was welcoming men that were people, period, that was coming here and wanted to better them themselves, wanted to mm -hmm. better their lives. It has been a decline, though. It's mm -hmm. been a decline in, in that respect, in the mm -hmm. idea of Atlanta being the civil rights movement type situation. It has been a decline in the love. Like, a lot of this stuff is missing. I don't know what we need to do. I don't have all of the answers. But I know with raising young adults, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. in the still in the, within the city and still within the city limits, it's disheartening to say the least. Mm-hmm. When you see them out here acting mm-hmm. like yes. that, yes, feeling a certain way, feeling like they're on top of the world because they do have a badge, it's okay. I love and respect the idea of you wanting to even get into that line of work. Mm-hmm. But you have a different type of responsibility right. when right. you get there. If you go in it for anything other than the love of your community and your people. Serve. Yeah. Yes. If you're not coming to serve. If you're not yes. coming to serve, I can tell you now, it's going to be a whole different ride for you. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a different ride for you. And I think what has happened to a lot of the policing culture is that the, the, them not understanding the serving part. Get out here in your community and see what your community need. Just because you no longer reside in that community, mm-hmm. this is no longer what you, you know, what you can, mm-hmm. I guess, relate to. Yes. It doesn't matter. Still get out there because guess what? It can easily be reversed. Oh, yeah. Sure. I think police needs to go back and live in the communities they're serving in. Man, my daddy wouldn't even, this is what's crazy. My daddy wouldn't even leave the west side of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. They begged him, tried to get him to move to South Fulton County, all these other different places. He said, I can't reach my people there. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, got killed by somebody in the community that he felt like he couldn't leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you have an officer that have pretty much laid their life down, now we got other officers coming in. To me, just to me, it's situations like that that should make the officers coming in better. That's mm-hmm. right. It should make them better. It shouldn't make them sit on a high horse or make them feel like they're better than the citizens that they propose, supposed to be protecting. But then they had that blue code where they That's see it, they they got that blue code where they yeah. know it's a problem. So I can't go against you because if I go against you and if I'm in trouble, mm-hmm. y'all ain't gonna show up to help me. That's true. That's the culture. That's right. The, exactly. So they've taken police culture. And they've replaced it with our culture, right? Mm-hmm. So when they when they put it on, they now have removed themselves from our culture, yes. from the mm-hmm. Atlanta black thinking about each other, loving each mm-hmm. other. They removed themselves from that. They mm-hmm. said, now I'm I'm immersed in this culture, That's right? And this culture is alien to us. It's That's anti right. us, yes. right? Because it, the roots of it come out of the whole idea of policing black bodies and mm-hmm. trying to track us down during our enslavement that's how policing emerges in the south it doesn't come out of you know hey let's just you know this is a a protect and serve it comes out of the idea of running us down us as the property Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that same mentality is what we are now seeing happen in atlanta all over the country and when you say the civil rights mm-hmm. we the capital, capital. The capital the How civil can you, why wouldn't we be the ones to release but that's, videos yes. that goes back to the problem people don't know their history Indeed. because when I be talking to people and people have moved here I be like they was like did you know yeah I know I was born and raised here how you don't know I I'm, I'm be, I'm be floored but, I'm like you're a person of color how you don't know your history that's because, what we tell our sons when you look they were born and raised here they mm-hmm. went Played at Welcome All Park. Yeah. Went to school. And so our whole thing is you got to come and respect Mm -hmm. the space. The folk who were here who built this. That's That's right. right. It wasn't even it wouldn't even be attractive if it wasn't for the folks who were already here. That's right. What if the and then too, you know, a lot of times, man, (coughs) um, like I I I tell people and I and I will continue to push the um the love within the community. Yes. So when you love where, where you work, That's right. when you love what you're doing, mm-hmm. it shows in how you deal with the people that you're Indeed. That's working right. with. That's mm-hmm. right. So I don't know, honestly, I, I don't know, and it's probably something I should um, look into. I don't know if, because I know that they're under uh, an immense amount of pressure, you know, as mm-hmm. law enforcement, and, mm-hmm. and that's to be expected. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to um, what happens in the at the precinct when you arrive to work, mm-hmm. the, the how how you the setting of when you get there, mm-hmm. what's going on? Mm-hmm. When they send y'all out here and tell you, you know, this is your beat, you know, whatever, whatever. What's happening with 
the management, the supervisors, the ones that are actually giving out these orders? Mm -hmm. Are they making it an environment, a loving environment there? Mm -hmm. So when you send your people out, you know, they, they still are, uh, have they said that, or are they, y'all need to do this, y'all need, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it intense in a way of, um, ain't no love there. Mm -hmm. So when they go out to serve the people, I think it just varies. ain't no love there. Because I know a lot of officers who are they they try to they walk that thin that thin line. They yeah, it's definitely to a balance in the blue culture or blue code. But then they're they the ones that I know that were born and raised here in Atlanta. They're still trying to make sure they remember where they came from mm -hmm. and try to do what they can, but. They be telling me it's very hard for them so. to try to look out for us, especially when they have somebody else riding with them. Now, mm. if they riding by themselves, then it may be a little different. It's a little but. different. But when they got somebody riding with them, or you know, sometimes you can pull up to a scene, they be by themselves, but then the next thing you know, three other cars. Like, how many people it take? Mm. So, usually what happens is they was like, I had it under control. And then they was like, then. This officer showed up, and I'll be like, they be like, and then it just went left, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, I, I didn't ask for this. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for y'all to show up. I had it under control. I was working the situation. Is that is came. that for the city though? Because from from what I've learned or from what I've heard, um, it is not like that no more. Not for the city of Atlanta because of the need of officers for, because we have a great need it's, it's um the ones that i know work for the city and for um fulton county oh, okay because yeah because i because what i what i've been um because i thought about that too i'm like are they sleep deprived mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying even They're even cool. that because it's like they get points yeah so yeah. they have a point system yes. right yeah. for their interactions they don't get any points if they come to a scene and just de-escalated. They get points for arrests. They get points for issuing tickets. Yeah. They have a point system. Mm -hmm. And so that creates a culture. That creates you know? a whole and so it's a, that, that, that becomes the driving okay. that becomes a driving force in how they mm. are interacting. Because they're not coming with the mindset. And, and when you think about it, isn't this the time for them to arrest fewer people? Isn't this the time? Like he's getting ready to take he can hold him in the jail it's already around a ticket that's already right, overcrowded. It's already that's overcrowded. Already overcrowded and people are dying. dying. Right. It don't even make any sense. Right. That's how illogical the system is. And mm -hmm. so you understand it as a system where that thrives off of our black bodies. You, mm -hmm. you know, it, it thrives so off of, it eats off of us. Right, yeah. so it's really a full circle exactly. of Man. how things operate because I'm just thinking, I'm like you, like you're going to arrest somebody for something this manu, yes. for something, a, a traffic ticket, because they don't want to sign a traffic t ticket. My thing is, after he said, I'll sign it, I'll sign it, you mm -hmm. still didn't want that. Mm -mm. No, you still put it. Wasn't enough. So that's what I'm wasn't saying. Enough. I don't agree with what she was saying. We'll go back to what Casey said. See, they bleed blue. But we bleed in red. Right. And they don't care about us. So you see what I'm saying? So it's like, because you bleed blue, I done buried my daddy. Right. Mm -hmm. And just so happened it was crazy because that's one of daddy's favorite colors was blue. So you know everything I did was in blue. Right. But this is my daddy. And I'm like, a traffic ticket. Like, you know, I think maybe daddy going to get a little old. I knew he going to be in the hospital or something else. You know, a little minor some. I, you know, take care of him, you know, because it's my daddy. It's the end. But, but a two hours later, from a traffic to know ticket. that my daddy died from a traffic ticket that he wanted to sign. Yeah, that, that he was not, okay with signing. Did not refuse to sign. Then y'all put this narrative out here, try to scandalize his name after you have killed him. Right. Well, that's usually and that's usually how it happened. But I promise you, when my brother sent me sent me that situation, he was just like, yeah, this don't sound right. He Your wasn't brother. going for it. Now keep in mind, your brother ain't no lawyer. Oh, uh -uh. but the he lawyer that like, called. Our lawyer to get him here, it was a lawyer in their law firm that called Tom and said, This don't sound right. Right. He said, reading it, it don't sound right. It he is. said, This don't make no sense at all. He said, We know Mr. Holloman. He worked for us, he's been around us, we know his character. This ain't right. He said, Tom, you need to find him a good lawyer, cause this ain't right. He said, I'm reading the report. He said, I know you ain't seen it. This ain't right. They wind up calling me over the phone. 
asking me about it because mind you when I first got to the scene I called another lawyer that he worked for but he don't do this type of law oh, but they, okay. I thought they was here in the city because my dad was like well if anything ever happened you know call him Matt and know what to do so when I called him they was in Colorado but he heard it he was like I can't hardly hear you Anitra you know you saw right so they wound up calling me back and they've been calling me every day since mm -hmm. like yeah. they are really disturbed even then she sent this whole letter explaining to you know talk about my daddy character who he was the man he was she said they couldn't even live in their house had it not been for my daddy this is just the type of man he was he made sure everything in the house was fixed the outside the guard anything they needed and now Matt just had a birthday yesterday he turned 80 years old Oh, my dad wow. was getting to the point where he couldn't hardly do the work no more, but he still was going because he didn't feel like other people would be as trustworthy as him to take right. care of them. That's the type of man he was. Mm -hmm. And the craziest thing is, I rem I when I thought about it, I'm like, I've only known your daddy. Mm -hmm. Like I, the, I've only known. You know how sometimes, like when you're younger, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember my mama. That. I only know, like, your daddy was active. Very much Always so. in the building. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just being mm -hmm. very supportive. Mm -hmm. And to just know that somebody, like, I, I don't know. It, it didn't sit well with me, like I said, when my brother first brought it to me. And then when I found out that it, who it was, I'm <laughs> yes. like, oh, no. Yeah. Like, they really tripping. But I know next weekend, mm -hmm. um, we're doing a march. Yes. So the march is going to be from what? So what we're area? marching. We're marching right down the street where um you know my dad got killed at, which is Dean Rest Park, mm -hmm. and it's on People Street. Um, the old Harris home. Most mm -hmm. people know if you say the old Harris home, they know where that yeah. park is. They sit at the bottom. Um, that's Dean Rest Park, and we're gonna march from there to City Hall, um, on Saturday the twenty third because we're asking, um, and we're requesting that that video, the body cam video, be released. You know, just make it transparent. If you say that this is what happened and this is what the officer said happened, let the world see it. Right. You know, put it out there. You know, we that means we not hiding behind nothing. Y'all not hiding behind nothing. We as the family and our Lord, we not hiding behind nothing. Put it out there. Let the world see so they can see what happened. Right. So we'll be able to, um, to, because the thing about it is when you lose a loved one, it's already bad enough to lose. Right. A look to lose a loved one, but to lose them at the hands of of um, somebody else, mm -hmm. it makes it a different situation for one, and to lose them to somebody that we're supposed to trust and mm -hmm. honor in our neighborhood because yes. they're there to serve and protect. That makes it a whole different situation. It does. And I forgot to add this. I know I don't mm -hmm. want to cut you off. No, you're but fine. Saturday is twelve o'clock. Okay. We need to be there. Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. At Dean Rose Park, y'all hear that now. Yeah, so we can be ready. I mean, I need everybody. Bring your little That's babies, right. bring your big children, your little children, your mamas, your daddies, your uncles, your sisters. That's right. We need everybody out. We need everybody out. Like, it need to be mass numbers because this is the only way we're going to change the narrative for us and our people. That's we right. got to stick together. Uh -huh. We got to show love to one another. And, you know, because like I said, I've done a lot of marches, you know. We've done a lot of food drives. Uh -huh. We've done clothes drives. I've literally taken all my shoes to give to people and went home with no shoes on driving back home. Mm -hmm. But that's what we do in our community because we love on our people. That's and so right. this is the time I need everybody out. I need them to come out in mass numbers so that we can do this march. Let them know that we're not playing. We're tired of this. We're tired of our people laying on the streets of Atlanta, the streets that we build. That's my right. daddy used to build nightclubs. My daddy done built shops. My daddy done worked in mineral gardens and mineral trees and cut down a whole bunch of stuff. But he died on the streets like that. Right. So I need the people out. I need them to be there. Meet me there at 12 o'clock so that we can march mm -hmm. and we can march for justice and get this video released. We need that. You want to say something? I absolutely you, agree. Look, I mean, we've been doing this. Our law firm has been doing civil rights. Like we do accidents and tractor trailers and all of that. But this, this civil rights law is different because we pay for the bullets for the tasers, mm -hmm. for the uniforms, for the badges and the cruisers and the salaries of people who then turn around and would take this elder's life. I mean, at some point it has to resonate with us as a people. And it's always been interesting. And, and over the years, when there are marches, our folk turn out when there's somebody that's been killed in, in Minnesota, mm -hmm. right? 
or in Louisiana. You know, we'll have a big right. or a big right. mass market, mm -hmm. but it happened here That's right. in right. Atlanta. And we need that and same energy. We need that same energy. And I'm not, it, and there's no shade on showing up for all of the others outside of Atlanta, but what it does is this. When we march about something that happens in Atlanta, it forces us to have to reckon with what's next, this right? right. Mm -hmm. You can you can come out and march for George Floyd, and then you can go back home because that happened in Minnesota. What right. more can you do? Mm -hmm. But on this one, after you march, your next question is, what's, what's next? This how how can I continue to live in Atlanta and allow this to happen and not respond? I got to do something. My question is like, who who do the people? Who do the people need to send emails to, in re regarding releasing this video? Because do we need to do we need to go to the mayor? Do we need to send videos to the we believe, chief of police? We believe the mayor, the chief of police, they all have authority to, to release, release the video. It. They do. Okay, so that's something that's something else that needs to be pushed too. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and this is something that can be done on your phone at, at home. At home, yeah. in your bed, under your bed, you could be anywhere you want to be and contribute to what we're needing at this moment. Had a petition, you know, to, it, for, yeah. for justice because the main goal is to get this, to get the video released. Because one thing I honestly feel like we know that if the video is released, it'll give um, a different idea of what actually happened yes. and right. what needs to happen to the officer. Exactly. That actually, you know, that that did this, you know, did this thing. And, and at 23 years old, I'm sure he's probably afraid. Mm -hmm. No, he's not afraid. I'm pretty yeah, sure that you, he's probably worried. He's not afraid things. because he's not he, afraid because one, he has protection of the police union as one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing that needs to go away in the whole police system is the police union and at least investigating themselves need to go away as well. Mm -hmm. GBI is still police. They mm -hmm. still know each other. They still do what they can for each other. So them investigating themselves need to go to go away as well because when you have a, when you try to have a transparent investigation, as you try to say, um, who's going to trust the police? investigating themselves mm -hmm. who's going to trust that they're going to give us the truth and let us know exactly what happened when it happened and how it happened that's not necessarily the case and most times it's not the case, not the case. um that narrative of the gbi coming in and investigate great they probably all are aspiring to go to the gbi so they probably all know people that work with the gbi so there's that that in itself shouldn't give us uh a calm to know that it's going to be done fairly mm -hmm. um the police you know a lot of times, the attitude is that they are the, the the authority of all over all other. When they're on the street, their their mindset is that I'm the authority of all other. I don't care if I tell you to kneel down in mud. That's what you need to do mm -hmm. because I'm the police. For one, I have this gun. I can shoot you at any time. See that mentality mm -hmm. that they have when they're policing, especially black folks. But when they're policing in general, mm -hmm. is the mentality that I'm super. And mm -hmm. you're not. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they and they and they teach them that mentality because they want them to be, they want them to be aggressive. They want them not to be. They don't want to see that they're not um, policing. Or I, can, they're not. I can assure you, if Deacon Holland was um, was not African American, no. this situation wouldn't no. be what it is. I, yeah, I, I'm, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. But yeah. it's still the mentality I, is still. It, it, like it, I said, it's more when it's us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But the mentality is there, period. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is but that, but the 23 I just have a, old still would have probably had the mentality. It probably it probably wouldn't have went as but, far. But to know right. when, when to turn it on and off to oh, me yeah. Yeah. lets me know that, that, it's possible. that it's possible. And it is. So if, if you can treat somebody that does not look like you with, with less aggression, you can do that to to your people as well. Exactly. But, but so that's yeah. the issue for me. But you got to remember where we are not looked at like he said Man. as people. They are looked at as people. So they get the respect cuz they go back from beginning of time. Oh. They we were don't already the there respect. to serve them. It was never really to serve and protect us. Yeah, we don't and, get the respect. And that whole idea that white folk lives are just treated as more valuable yes. sacred than mm -hmm. ours right and so 
that has been the programming for years for, well, for, over a hundred yeah. years yeah. that's the programming is is that you know you you can be as crazy as you want to be mm -hmm. but you bet not take one of their lives right mm -hmm. you can take one of ours Mm. But don't take one of theirs right. because the consequences will be dire, right? Mm, right? And so that's part of, we got to understand when y'all, I mean, the, what y'all raised about the history, all of that is the mm -hmm. history that we yes. got to, you said, unlearn. Yes, we got to mm -hmm. unlearn We got to get it out of our spirit. There's it, no way that we can continue living living like that and the main reason is because it's detrimental to us yes, yes. It is. and you know they talk about I, I hear people all the time saying you know the black on black crime and this that and other but any community that you go in is going to be that what the base majority yeah crime like, on each other like yeah yeah, yeah. It, mm -hmm. of course i was put a put a name to it but if you that's just like um it's just crime. yeah it's in the situation crime. with, with in gwinnett it's county just not just even long the other day where With the, the Asian, yeah, Asian or nobody Asian. said nothing about Asian or Asian crime. No, and I'm like, <laughs> am I missing something here? Yeah, because all the racial I'm paying their attention. Their crime. If yeah. they have their own neighborhoods, that's they right. Have they have crime. crime. They do. Yeah, that's and that's the part. That, televised, but that's God. the part. It gets televised. It get it gets pushed out there. I hear a lot about it, but it's disheartening um, for me. You know, for 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 black people to constantly talk, yeah. So that, that we don't value our lives, so nobody else should. And it's like that's, you sound crazy, crazy. Right. Yeah, it's very because much so. no, just because like that that that's that's Until wrong. Until it happens to them, then it, yeah, they, would not they wouldn't be able to recognize it. But no, just because somebody else don't recognize your value doesn't mean you know it doesn't. It changed the value. That's but, right. But it's going <laughs> like, back to crazy. Yeah. what Anitra was saying. People need to, first of all, go out and vote. And when you do vote, know who you're voting for. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like some people, are, they say, oh, I voted. Well, who did you vote for? I don't know. Mm -hmm. well, what, do, what do you mean you don't know who you voted for? Well, it's, it's very important, important to be an informed voter. But the only problem with it, with being an informed voter in, in Atlanta Atlanta is a tale of two cities. Mm -hmm. I come from both of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say that. It's a tale of two cities. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you're voting for the lesser of the two evils. And the reason why I everywhere. say that, but exactly, but the reason why I say that is because, for one, just to me, it should be a limit on all of the seats. Yes. In the city, mm -hmm. like nobody should be able to die out of a seat, and they've been there 25, 30 years. Especially if it's nothing changing. Especially right. and, and, and ain't nothing changing. But this is the thing: you also have to be amongst the who's who, right? In order to even get a seat there, <laughs> that has to change too. Mm -hmm. That has to change. That's and a lot, but that's happening everywhere because I know in. Like our sheriff in Douglas County, he was just a police officer for years, and that's how he got voted in because he was the who's who when the sheriff finally decided he didn't want to be the sheriff no more. So everybody voted for him because of who he was, but he ain't no better than the next person. But the system that I was the just the system <laughs> says here's what the priorities are, uh -huh. and this system what what so it doesn't matter they can replace. A black person with a white person as long as they keep the system going exactly. and so that's why it's so important not just to vote but for us to be in organizations that hold the system that challenge the mm -hmm. system that hold it accountable exactly. and when necessary disrupt that's it right. that's right that's right it will, right that we gotta that, that's what that's why you know when the family said this gonna be their third march Yes. Right. This day okay. third March. So they marched. Disrupt the system. They, marched, disrupt they marched from APD to City Hall and the police were on bicycles. Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta hear this now. The police rolled out on bicycles to try to block us. Yes. We marching with the family. Now they had just gone through the traumatizing effect of having a police officer take their father and then the police roll up and with their bikes and try to block us. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of the family members are like visibly shaking because was she was shook, right? Because they they like, why are they treating us like this? Mm -hmm. Don't we have a right to 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 march to city hall? Right. And so that was the first march. The second march, the students at the Atlanta mm -hmm. University Center, 
So some of these kids, they ain't even from Atlanta, mm-hmm. but they here now, and they right. say we gonna we gonna lock arms with mm-hmm. this family. Mm-hmm. So they march from the uh, Atlanta University Center uh, to the CNN Center to try to bring a spotlight and say we as students support this family. Right. Family they came out on us there. They came out there. So the families, this is their third march. This is the one they're calling for because the first one was called for by organizers, the second one by students. Now the family said, no, nah, we got to do this. Right. And we want Big Head Nation. That's we right. We want every part of Atlanta don't want to be there. show up, mm-hmm. you know, because that's they call. And yes. so we rocking with them. We're saying we're going to be with you every step of the way because Absolutely. we understand that this system it only serves us when we end up disrupting it and mm-hmm. making folk yes. uncomfortable. That's right. If they, if we just allow them to do what they and do, and just keep waiting, mm-hmm. it, they'll wait us out. Yep. And that's what they've been trying to until do until we go into the grave. But they don't understand. They because I mean you know they probably ain't just never met no neutral. I don't give up easy. You know I ain't never had that exactly going. because so in my mouth has always been big. I'm real loud. Exactly. Talk all over the place. Yes. And your daddy deserves it, and man. He do, like he does. Indeed. He definitely and didn't deserve what ha- didn't deserve what happened on the side of the road. But because it did happen, he deserves for people to get out and support you all. And mm-hmm. the clergy, I mean, he's a deacon, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Not just of that church. Mm-hmm. What he's what when you take on a certain position Mm -hmm. is for the church universal right so every pastor every deacon every Mm -hmm. deaconess every usher board member every church going person whether Mm -hmm. you go to church the mosque the elay whatever you should be like whoa wait a minute now right it took a man man who says he's committed to serving god's people Mm -hmm. that's right and then it took him and the family says march we best march that's right. We well, better I'm, stand I'm, up. I'm here for it. So this is this is the march put on by the family, and it's going to be this Saturday. We're starting at Dean Russ Park at 12 o'clock noon. And we're going to City Hall? City Hall. City Hall. But we also going to have papers that, you know, they can sign okay. um, for the petition because that's how serious it is. We want that video release. Like, we want the video release. We're not going nowhere. We ain't going to stop. We ain't hide behind nothing. You're not going to be able to hush us up. You're not going to be able to silence us. We want the video released. Absolutely. And the, what what are the uh, before we before we go? What are the odds of the video being released? I know that um you have worked quite with um the, the, the odds are what the people make them. Cool. And I tell folk all the time, mm-hmm. I'm proud of what we have built as a law firm. We got three offices, nine lawyers, thirty employees, but the power still rests with the people. That's right. Okay. And and that's. We move how we move mm-hmm. because we know that the people had a power mm-hmm. to change things. Because we see in this in this system that we're in, we see how they devalue our mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. You get hit and rear end it, and you go get some treatment. Your your injury is going to be worth less than the person who got injured up in Buckhead. Mm-hmm. Not on our watch, no. right? Mm-hmm. And so. We're saying that from top to bottom, we got to resist every aspect of them devaluing us. And so we need the people to make it so. And yeah. so we, we we don't hold no, we don't claim to be, we're the super, we can make this just yeah. pop. Mm-mm. It's going to be us collectively. Right. Okay. Let's get this thing and that's going. What we got, we got to get the people out because just like he said, it, you know, and we all spoke of it. If it's not you today, oh, no. then who? Right. You see what I'm saying? Because it's, I, I looked at the TV and I watched a lot of stuff too. I never thought that this would be yeah. in my in my lap or at my front door, but right. it is. So the same way, you know, it may be somebody else. But if we don't stick together as a people, sooner or later, it ain't gonna be no more of this. Right. You know. Do you have something on social media that we can that I can repost or? Yes, we got stuff on social media that can be repost. Um, we have an IG page for him at Justice for Johnny Holloman. Um, I post a lot of stuff uh, that I tag people in. I know you posted something done on mm-hmm. April showers. She got different stuff that we post. Um, what's the man? Daxton. He had Daxton posted, Pettis. He, yeah, Pettis. Okay, he I, I posted the that. marches, and he did a lot of that on there. So, like, if you go to that at Justice for Johnny Holloman, if you you will see a lot of stuff. I posted a lot of stuff on there, or like my page is just my personal page, but I still been posting. Um, Nene seven eight nine April showers have things posted. 
I know Donna posted stuff on her personal page and with Westside Misfit. So it's, it's a lot of stuff out there. Okay, because I want to so, post and repost them on. So justice, okay. yeah, justice for um for Johnny Holliman. So that's the hashtag that'll be used. Well, we've been using different hashtags, but I've been using mainly say his name. Okay. And then I've also been using the one my son came up with, J4J, which is justice for Johnny. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those hashtags really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and just for, and if you do justice for mm -hmm. Johnny Holliman yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like those hashtags make a difference because what you'll want is even if it's something that's not even associated with your, what you're doing. Yes. You ask people to add that hashtag mm -hmm. and. Trust me, once it starts trending, yes, mm -hmm. it, it gains traction and yes. people want to know what's going on. Hey, yes. right. what's, yes. what's happening? Like, what's mm -hmm. so, justice for Johnny? Yes, yeah, so people inbox you. Yes, and very much. And they're going to be, they're going to be asking. So at the uh, rally on Saturday, because I know for us with um, Misfits Radio and TV, as a collective, we're going to, of course, push the, um, push the rally for this up, through this upcoming week. Okay. But at the rally, that's going to be something very important to let people know. If you're you're posting, you're, you're here, Yes. use mm -hmm. the hashtags. Right. Yes. And if they follow me on my Facebook page, too, I also have, like, uh, what they can scan is um, QR code. Okay. I, I posted in on my story, as a matter of fact, it's on there today. But I keep posting and I keep putting it up there. Um, and on my Facebook page, it's the Nitro Always Trusted Him Fallen. Um, so they can go in there and they can see. And I also posted... A lot of things on that so it's like for my Instagram it switch over to my Facebook and I also try to post something about him every single day and today I posted that QR code that came from Instagram so if they click on that they can keep sharing reposting stuff sending stuff to us so we can keep putting stuff out there absolutely man we, we're looking to um to invite a lot of people out to yes. support you yes know? we want the city to come out they come out for the concerts that's right they come out for all the other stuff mm -hmm. they come out for these park events I need them to come out this Saturday at 12 o'clock, Dean Rest Park, so that we can march for justice for my father, Chairman Deacon Johnny Holloman Sr. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, we greatly appreciate you guys. And once again, you all have our deepest condolences. Thank you. You know, it, 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 one thing about uh, burying your parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. It ain't easy. Mm -hmm. It is not. Mm -hmm. And she and I both have, you know, we, I know. we've been, we've been yes, now. Yes. But the thing about it is, man, we're going to continue YouTube. So, yeah, yes. I lost so my father almost two years ago, December. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're definitely, uh, we know the kind of support, what the support do for you all as a family. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and I can be honest with you, your sister probably is just like, you know. But you got to imagine, she's nervous too, because we lost so. three people in eight months. So we've had two to be taken and one was just sick, but we knew that that was coming. So my nephew, of course, he got shot at the end of December of uh, 2022. In the result of his gunshot wounds, he later died, you know, December the 31st. So my sister's still living with that pain. Exactly. So it's of traumatizing. Course, you know, from January, like from late December to now, it's August. We would have never been expecting that. My dad was really like going, trying to get justice and help my sister to get justice for her son yeah so when she see the police now she's very frantic she up and left her house and she's not you know she didn't PTSD stay there she got out another real. place yeah. yes and then like you know my children they are going through it my nephew he's going through it like you know i had to even call try to get him counseling and stuff like that so they having a hard time dealing with it like even when i come to events like this like my son i know you just asked about him mm -hmm. he in the car like we don't drive by ourselves anymore mm -hmm. we don't go nowhere by ourselves like i'm so nervous now i hate when they go out now because I'm like did you call me you know that was one of the things like my dad always told them like if something go wrong always call so they Absolutely. know to call and put somebody on speaker because we got to hear what's going on but now it's to a different level it's more you know intense and so with that I know my sister have health issues and it really makes her nervous she don't mind doing the walks but you know her anxieties it be through the roof yeah. because of this situation on high alert man one thing about it you know and, and it's human nature mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. to deal with being on high alert and the PTSD that comes with all of the, the tra traumatizing things that can happen mm -hmm. right. and that's why that support is very important yes. especially for the families who um, honestly who, who asking for it that's right yeah. you know mm -hmm. and, and you all don't ask for much no mm -hmm. so with you all stepping out of the box and asking I need you all to support me I think a lot of people will you know, we'll, we'll be there. Okay. And, um, you know, we'll come out in numbers and 
like you said, we have petitions for people to sign and things of that nature. And we greatly appreciate you guys for coming on. But thank yeah. you for having us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank you. You all will see, um, you'll see some excerpts from our interview. And like I said, we're live on everything uh, from YouTube to Roku TV. We're live on uh, Misfits Radio. That's the name of our radio station. Yes. We're also live on Facebook, Instagram, and in two days, we will, um, all of the interviews will be up. And we're everywhere you want your art to be. If you look up Misfits Radio on TV, you'll see us there. Okay. Hey. <laughs> all right, thank, thank you guys so much, man, and we'll, um, we'll speak with you soon. All right, thank, thank you. you. DJ Lab, you ready? All right. Get in the mix with the West Side Misfits every Sunday from 3 to 5. Yo. Yo. You're independent, this the mix you need to get up in it Three to five, the show be lit from start to finish Hit them up to slide through and promote your business DJ Lab known to keep the hottest record spinning Mix, mix a lot and Tay Mac discuss the hottest topic Those not a 2000 to let you know what's really popping Miss Slick gon' make sure she get the mangles right Making moves even though she's staying out of sight Check the website, Misfits Media Group Keep it 100 cause that's how they gon' give it to you Something for anyone and everyone from every wall 365, 24-7, got music and talk Sundays, you know we getting in the mix 3 to 5 with Westside Misfits Kick facts, play music, and talk slick Tell a friend, tell a friend to get in